Okay, hey everyone, welcome to the third workshop of the day of our day three of our workshop week. I hope everyone's having a good uh, return to in-person lectures this week and I hope everyone's staying safe. So today's topic is Authentic Me by BMO and uh, I will have a special guest from BMO. Her name is Vijayida and she'll be, uh, she'll be coming over to tell you what, what Authentic Me sessions are all about. So here's Vijayida. Hey, how are you? Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. I'm good. Good. How's it going? Good. Thank you very, uh, very much for coming over. Uh, we're really happy to have you over uh, during a hackathon week. Of course. Happy to be here. Yeah. So could you start us off with a little bit of introduction about yourself and what you know, the viewers can expect from after today's workshop? Yeah, absolutely. So hi, everyone. Uh, thank you again for joining us. I hope that you'll love the session that we have uh, put together for you. So my name is Vijeta. I am a campus recruiter uh, for technology and operations at BMO. Uh, so I've been here for just over nine months, uh, but I've been in campus recruitment for over three years. Um, I absolutely love chatting with students and connecting and finding opportunities for amazing talent. Um, with that being said, I am very happy to connect on LinkedIn, answer any questions that you may have. And like I said, hopefully this session really helps you tailor your resume a little bit better into how, like what re love recruiters are looking for, um, and how to be interview ready. It's a little intro. Thank you very much for that intro. Uh, we're really excited to see, uh, to see what you have on, in, in store for us. All right, awesome. So without further ado, uh, let's have you on this on the stage. All right, the stage is yours. Perfect. Thank you. Let me know if there are any technical difficulties, because I know we run into those sometimes on, on my end as well. Um, so hi everyone, welcome to the UHAX Authentic Me session. I am your host, Vijeta Pradaj, as I, I've introduced myself. Um, this is a short agenda. Um, it's packed with lots of fantastic content though. So we'll start off by introducing our amazing campus team. Then we'll move into uh, making your pitch count. So this is where we'll be able to dive deeper into making your 30 seconds with a new connection matter. And we'll follow that up with a recruiter wishlist of a sort section where you'll get to step into our shoes and be the recruiter. Uh, and then time permitting, I'll definitely open the floor up for questions. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm happy to answer questions. That is just myself, so I'll do my very best. Uh, so hopefully you've seen some of these uh, awesome faces uh, floating around our social media channels and at events before today. Uh, we're definitely here to help you make your, your first steps onto a meaningful career path, and we want you to know our team. So on the far left is our leader, Lisa Kramer, who is the Director of Enterprise Campus Recruiting and Early Talent. Alongside Lisa, we have Vicky, who leads the Technology, Operations, and Corporate Areas Portfolio. Um, and the awesome team who helps make things happen consists of Sarah, myself, Vidita, Allison, Lisa, Tracy, Katie, Katie F., Amy, and Inder. Uh, then we have Nikki Simone, who leads our campus recruitment efforts for personal and business banking, wealth management, and commercial banking. So her fantastic team is comprised of Allison, Lucy, Florina, Zainab, Rita, Emily, Jessa, Angela, Carol, Katie, and Erin. And last but definitely not least, we have Amy Squire, who manages our student experience programming. And alongside Amy, we have Monica. So they're the ones who are um, at kind of the, the back end of all of our LinkedIn posts and, and more of like our social media side. And also once our students start, they are the ones who carry out the entire student experience program um, and coordinate some awesome events for our interns. So let's jump right into the, the first section. So making your pitch count. 
as you've heard um, or likely heard, first impressions matter and they can stick with you. So make sure you're making every networking interaction memorable. So to kick off this section, we want to simplify creating your pitch to three steps. So any more steps and you'll find that you, you know, you're rambling and your new connection may start to lose interest in your conversation. So first, start by introducing yourself and provide a summary of what you do. As you approach someone to start a conversation, whether at an event, interview, virtual networking function, or even a hackathon uh, such as UHACS, um, you know, give your full name, school, what program you're in, um, and any pertinent information. This is a good way to make a very positive first impression. Um, and in addition, it provides a brief explanation of your background really quickly. Uh, you should definitely include the most relevant information, such as your education, work experience, and any of your key specialties, certificates, or strengths. If you're not sure what to include, try write everything that comes into mind on a piece of paper. And after that, review what you've written and remove anything that's not absolutely critical to explaining your background. And so instead, focus on why you have what they may be looking for. You may also consider checking your resume for key points, and this will be a really good place to begin pulling uh, key experience and skills that you have that you may want to mention and highlight. And side note, I also do this as well. So, you know, it's not just this, you know, these tips are not just for students, like we use them in the professional world as well. I definitely write down the key points and that's how I tailor my pitch as well. Um, and so the second step is explaining what you can do. So this step depends on what you're using the pitch for. The main talking point of your pitch could be a, a consideration for a job opportunity, an internship, or simply to get contact information. So this right here is a good opportunity to explain the value you bring, why you're a good fit for a job, or what your connection has to gain from your interaction and what you have to offer. And finally, you want to finish with a call to action. This is very important. So end your pitch by asking for what you want to happen next. So for example, ask for like asking for a meeting, expressing interest in a job or internship position, confirming you fully answered an interview question, et cetera. So it's important to give the conversation the action item that the other person can use to continue talking. Um, even for example, like suggesting a book to read or an article or podcast to check out, uh, this will help to keep, keep the conversation flowing and also make sure that you, know, you have made a good impression to them and you have stood out. A tip to keep in mind is that the length of your elevator pitch should be 75 words. Any longer and you'll slowly st start to lose the interest of the person you're talking to. So let's see if you can identify which pitch here tells the right story. So for this purpose, I'll use my own name um, and I'll read it out and, you know, we can see if it's a, a, a hit or a miss. So. Hi, my name is Vijayatha Pardwaj. It's great to meet you. I'm a current student at Brock. I interned at Loblaws previously, but I'm looking to get an experience in the financial industry. I saw a posting for a financial analyst co-op and was wondering how I could get an interview. So I'm not sure here if, if anyone can chat. Is this open? Um, can anyone like type a chat in or... Or no, I'm not sure. Uh, so if you guys have any uh, questions, please do drop them in the chat. But uh, so what, what kind of uh, response were you looking for? for the, for the so series? is this a hit or a miss? Like, I, I'm just trying to make it a bit more interactive. Let's see if we can. Uh, I see. Are we able to do that? Uh, yeah, we, we definitely can. But uh, we'll wait for a little bit for uh, some responses first. <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay. This is a bit more of an interactive presentation. So there will be a bit, some components where I'll be reading out to the audience. Um, so just let me know when a few comments start to popping in. I will continue on in the meantime. Um, so in comparison, let's try another one. So, you know, if, uh, if we could have guessed the first one was probably a bit more of a miss. Um, and this moving into a new pitch, 
Uh, so hello, my name is Vijitha Pardwaj. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm a current student at Brock University studying a Bachelor of Economics with a minor in Business Administration. I have experience working with multiple student organizations and currently hold the position of president within our economic society. I'm a dedicated student with aspirations to work in the financial industry when I graduate. I'd love to talk more about the current financial analyst co-op position you are recruiting for. So, you know, if if you could interact, we would see that this is maybe more of a hit than, than the first one, um, which is great. So some delivery tips for a powerful pitch. Um, take your time. An elevator pitch is a quick conversation by nature, but remember to speak clearly and carefully. So again, keeping your pitch to around 75 words should help deliver uh, an all the important information in a concise way. Um, you also want to make it conversational. So it's helpful to plan your elevator pitch ahead of time and practice, um, but make sure it sounds natural and authentic to you. A good way to keep your pitch conversational is to memorize a general outline of key points to your speech um, and keep the structure in the back of your mind while you're talking. And also just as a kind of last tip, uh, only use conversational terms. So rather than using acronyms, technical terms, or industry-specific words and phrases, use language that everyone can easily understand. So you'll likely be speaking to people of a variety of uh, career backgrounds. So try replacing technical terms with general, easy to understand language. Um, and also asking friends or family for feedback can be really useful for this step. Um, even things such as, you know, listing out the extracurricular that you're involved in instead of saying, you know, um, I could have said like the BESA or something like Brock Economics Student Association, but you want to say it out instead of using acronyms, right? So this just helps um, keep it clear and concise for everyone to easily understand. And of course, then also expressing confidence is very important. Um, now we'll shift gears into the next session section, sorry, which is our recruiter wish list. So this is everything we want to know before you apply. So first off, um, how resume savvy do you consider yourself? So I, I would have loved to know uh, how we consider ourselves, but you know, say it out loud and I, I hope everyone is, you know, from a scale, from an area of like five to 10, hopefully. Um, and hopefully that five moves up towards the, towards 10 as we kind of cover this section off. So um, we're gonna start by roasting this resume. So what are some problems with this resume that you see? And of course we're gonna roast the resume of Bruce Wayne, AKA Batman. Um, I'll give you, a few seconds just to quickly look over it, make a note of what you're seeing that, you know, doesn't really look right, is inconsistent. And these are things- If I may interject here, Vijay, that, <laughs> that first thing I see on the resume is that the, some of the points are written in first person as well. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. That's a good point. That is definitely one of the, the many things that are wrong with uh, with uh, Bruce's resume. Um, so a few more things, inappropriate email address, personal address is completely wrong. Um, it should be, you know, the full street address and then city as well. Or alternatively, you can just put street and province. Uh, there's a wrong chronological order of dates, so it should always be the most recent first. This goes for both your education, um, you know, your activities, and your work experience. Um, the objective statement is too generic and doesn't encompass key skills or attributes. The formatting is messy and com uh, inconsistent, and um, you know, hobbies are not relevant. There's a lot going on here, so. Um, you know, as we look at this, uh, hopefully, you know, you're, you'll be able to make a few more changes to your resume. Um, and now we'll run through Bruce's updated resume uh, and see what key areas he made changes to that help make this, his resume more professional. So 
first off, make sure your name is in big or bolded font. You can use a unique font for your name to help stand out, of course, as long as it's easy to read. Um, second, ensure that your phone number and email address are at least 12 point font, so it's easy to read for us. Uh, these are very, very critical pieces of information that recruiters look for when engaging you in the recruitment process. Um, and you know, you'd be surprised by how many students don't include their email address and you know, we have to go looking around for it. But if it's right there, then we are contacting you ASAP. Sometimes we need to pick up the phone and ask you a few questions. Um, and so if this information is right there off the bat, it makes it so much easier for us. Um, and thirdly, making sure that your email address is appropriate. So it should not, or sorry, it should contain your first or last name. Uh, and maybe some numbers, of course, if that address was already taken. Um, examples of inappropriate email addresses include addresses with words like baby or girl, blonde, cutie pie, or any racial cultural language. Another important do not on your resume is do not include your sin or birthday unless you have a firm job offer with a very reputable company. Uh, this information can be used to see their identity or other fraudulent purposes. And of course, this does happen. Uh, students do include this information. So please do not include that information in your resume. Um, as for objectives or major achievements, so this is where you can discuss relevant things that you have achieved and state what you are looking or aiming for. So objectives such as to utilize my skills and learn new ones or to save money for my education are very helpful statements. So to fill out this section, consider asking yourself how much, how large, how many. So it can be critical to mention size, scale, and scope in relation to your experience because it may enable the reader to grasp the level of extent, um, le sorry, level and extent of your experience. Um, and this also goes for your professional working experience. If you are able to put numbers to it, that is fantastic. It really helps us grasp um, a better picture of, um, you know, what you're explaining or what you're saying. So education is an important, important, important section for recruiters. Um, it tells us whether you're looking for an internship or co-op role or a new grad role. It also tells us where our capabilities lie and where you might fit the best within our organization. So first, clearly state your graduation year or anticipated graduation date. So this is especially important with new grad roles and rotations. Um, so, you know, if you're still in school, not graduating until 2024, we know that you're slotted into a co-op or internship role. If you have May 2022 or June 2022 on your resume, we know that you are going to be a best fit for a new grad role. So it's very, very important. Um, and secondly, you can list your GPA if it is over 3.0, and it's also good practice to list it in its range. So, for example, 3.0 out of 4.0. Um, and number three, if you have multiple relevant certificates, you may want to list them under the skills or education section. But if you only have one certificate, then you can list it under highlight so that our eyes kind of gravitate towards it and it's, and it's truly highlighted a bit better. Um, and fourthly, there are no hard and fast rules. So format your information into the sections as it makes sense to you. Um, I would definitely say like as long as it's easy to read um, and, you know, your name and your uh, phone number and email address are, you know, clearly at the top or, or somewhere that are highlighted. I think that's the most important. I always let students know, you know, if you want to have a little bit of fun with your resume, feel free to do so. If you like certain um, templates, then go for it, right? Like it doesn't have to be the standard black and white anymore. It can be a little colorful. It can be, there can be circles or, you know, different shapes. So, they also are a reflection of yourself, right? So I love seeing personalities come through resumes as well. Um, and with your work uh, experience section, so you want to make sure that you use bullet points to outline key tasks and achievements you had in that specific role. Um, you can list more relevant tasks and transferable skills at the top of the list. Um, and even if you are making a chronological resume, you can have a skills section. So be very specific about the concrete and tangible skills that you do have. Um, and again, to help fill out this section, consider asking yourself, what was it for or what did you do? 
So it's helpful to explicitly explain the purpose behind what you did in your jobs if it's not readily apparent. So for example, was it a migration or an update? What was the purpose of the migration or update? What was the end result? Who benefited? Did it help your company or customers? This level of detail, again, can really help reviewers um, assess how applicable your experience is to what their company is trying to accomplish. Um, and next, as we mentioned, like, can it be measured? If you're if you saved your company five million dollars um, or you closed three or more one million sales per month, you can you can or you completed all of your projects are 80 percent faster as you expected, et cetera. Uh, you should say so because it is quantitative way of representing your experience and the impact you had for previous employers. Um, of course, if you can put numbers it's great. Uh, so the activities and interest section, uh, the, this section really gives us an opportunity uh, to, to see what your, you know, what interests you're showcasing and anything kind of to do with your personality. So which can go quite a long way, um, especially to see if there's a fit within the corporate culture. So highlighting any relevant clubs you are a member um, at and your contributions to the clubs is fantastic. Listing relevant activities you have participated in like case competitions, stock pitches, and any awards you may have won. And for example, UHAX, you can definitely add to your resume. Um, you can list your technical skills that are relevant to the job you apply for as well. Um, so what you do have to keep in mind is that when someone has to review a large number of resumes in consideration for an opportunity, they typically scan each resume very, very quickly. Uh, so focusing, in my experience, mostly on the actual experience and not as much um, time, if any, on the summary, objective or skills technology summary. So if they don't see what you're what they're looking for in 15 to 30 seconds, they can actually pass over you and move on to the next resume. And while you may think this is unfair, it is reality and it is your job to not let them do that. Um, so, you know, we, again, we are looking at resumes very, very quickly. We're looking at hundreds every single day. So ensuring that, you know, you're bolding those uh, amazing skills that you have, the transferable skills and making sure that your name is very clear. Um, this saves us a lot of time and, and can really put you through to the next step very easily. Um, so it's time for you to be for you to be the recruiter. I'll put up an example resume and uh, let me well, you can think about <laughs> what you notice in the first 15 seconds of it being on the screen. Um, so this is Taylor Swift's resume. I'll give you a, a few seconds to have a look at it. And let's see if you can like think of any big no-nos happening here. There are, are a few. So let's, let's go into a little bit of a debrief. So what did you catch from the first resume? Um, or the first half of the resume, sorry, and you can, you can answer in your head. Um, but uh, definitely some potential errors were inappropriate email address incomplete phone number, the objective statement is too short uh, and too broad, the formatting was off, inconsistent headings uh, formatting wise, letters were capitalized when they shouldn't be, and conflicting education dates. Uh, Taylor was enrolled at Harvard and Ryerson at the same time. Uh, and now we'll go into this, the last half of the um, resume and kind of think of what else is going on here that uh, is not good practice. So some potential errors that we saw there were inappropriate references like her dad. Uh, some extracurriculars were not relevant, inconsistent heading format, um, formatting was off and included irrelevant work experience. So now that you've stepped into the shoes of a recruiter, we can recap on a few of the top things on a recruiter's wish list. So first of all, making sure you, ta you tailor your resume to every job you apply for. So this is incredibly important and can be the difference of you being considered for a role. 
And I will note that if you change your cover letter for each role to please um, change it to the correct company, because again, you may be surprised at how many cover letters we receive that have uh, the wrong company uh, name. Uh, and so just making sure that you know you're really paying attention to also the cover letter aspect of it if you so choose to add it in. Um, and secondly, be sure to keep it to one to two pages maximum. So as we saw, like recruiters don't spend too much time scanning resumes. So be sure to be concise. So I would even say one page is great. One and a half pages is okay. I think two pages is quite long unless you have some amazing, amazing experience. And, um, you know, there's a lot to say. Uh, so proofread for mistakes is very important. Uh, this can definitely make or break your chance to be considered for a role. Attention to detail is so key for all of our student positions and new grad roles. Um, and number four, avoid acronyms. So it's best to use simple language that can be understood by a large audience. Number five, use keywords from the job description. So if it says looking for someone with Python, Python knowledge or working experience with Python, you can add that to your resume and bold it, Java, C Sharp, anything. You know, it, it's great. And it really takes the recruiter's eyes to those key um, keywords. Um, and then lastly, avoid cliches and generic statements. So be authentic and true to your experience. Um, and, you know, sound like yourself and be yourself. Um, now, what happens when you get an interview, you may ask. So we're here to help you with that too. Uh, so how to succeed in your interview every single time. So let's find out what you should be doing before your interview. So know the industry. Do your research and make sure you're up to date with what's going on in that industry. It may be helpful to join relevant clubs or participate in industry specific competitions to help brush up your knowledge. Know the organization, so read their website. Lots of good information can actually be found on company websites. Um, and you may also choose to reach out to alumni or attend networking sessions, asking current employees about their the company's culture um, and why they chose to work at that company. Uh, aim for a perfect polish. So practice until you're confident, not until you have your resume memorized. So practicing it in front of a mirror to ensure you're coming across as authentic and not rehearsed can be really beneficial as well. So creating your own personal story. So this is your unique selling point and a chance to start the interview off on the right foot. So your story must represent your beliefs, values, strengths, skills, and even your weaknesses. So being authentic and showcasing who you are as a whole person is the best way to answer, tell me about yourself. Be sure to prepare uh, before your interview and consider structuring your answer in a chronological order. So start with your past, outline your present and share your aspirations for your future. Um, this also helps, you know, whoever is interviewing you to, to get to know truly like, you know, where you were and what you've been working on and what you want in the future and, and possibly how they can help you get help, how they can help get you there. Um, the most dreaded question for most people can be scary to answers and that's what's your biggest weakness? Uh, generic question answers, sorry, like I'm a perfectionist uh, or I don't have any, don't play well in an interview. Uh, it's not a specific answer, and it doesn't show that you took the time to reflect on your past experience to prepare an answer. Um, an example of a good answer to this question could look something like, data and reporting is something that never came naturally to me, and Excel was an application I didn't have too much experience with. So to overcome these weaknesses, I've taken a few Excel courses and spend extra time on reporting to ensure everything I'm submitting is accurate and correct. So whatever your weakness is, be sure to showcase what you are doing or have done to overcome it. Uh, this truly demonstrates self-awareness and shows the recruiter or hiring manager that you take initiative to learn and develop your skills constantly. So prepare and practice. So some key actions that will bring success to your interview are um, 
being sure uh, to know your resume inside and out. So you should be able to reference it and speak to every piece of information you included throughout the interview. And this kind of goes back to my point of, you know, how lengthy your resume should be. If it's a page, then, you know, make sure you know it. If it's two pages, then definitely make sure that you know all the information that's on there, right? Um, and secondly, know your transcript. So be sure to be able to speak to any lower grades you may have. So if you get asked, an example is like, math is not a subject I excel in, so my calculus mark is lower than my other courses. I can say that throughout the course, I saw my grades steadily improve as I got help from my school's peer tutoring service and spent extra, try, extra time reviewing additional problems to become more comfortable with the material. So this example shows initiative and explains why your grade is lower than your other courses. And this also just goes to show, you know, self-awareness is really important. Um, and whoever is interviewing you is also human. And sometimes students, uh, you know, we get so we get so nervous and don't think about it. But, um, you know, they, they truly want to see your self-awareness and, and we all have our weaknesses. So so speak on it very um, candidly. Uh, thirdly, know your interviewer. So take some time to research uh, your interviewer, check LinkedIn to see their background and what position they currently hold. This will also give you um, a conversation starter during the interview and demonstrates your preparedness. And so when answering a behavioral question in an interview, it's best to structure it using the STAR method. I'm not sure if um, anyone here has heard of it or, or maybe you have, and if you have, that's fantastic. Um, so STAR is S-T-A-R-E. -S uh, so situation, describe the situation or scenario you will provide, task, Describe the task or challenge you encountered. Action, describe what you did. Result, describe the result of the action you took. And evaluate, so what did you learn and how did you apply what you learned to future situations? So a good practice um, question can be, um, you know, ask yourself like, just can I describe this stressful situation and how I handled it and, and go through the STAR method and, you know, really refine it into the situation or scenario. So making sure that, you know, you're not rambling on for three or four sentences describing the situation. It should be very concise. Um, all in all, this, um, you know, answering these few questions should maybe take like two to three minutes. Um, you know, practicing is really, really important when it comes to interviewing. Um, and then an area of opportunity for most candidates in interviews is when the interview asks, do you have any questions? So by asking questions, it definitely demonstrates that you are fully engaged in the interview and we're actively listening. So these are just some examples of questions to ask. Uh, what do you expect the student to accomplish within 60 to 90 days? What are the common attributes of your top performers? What are a few things that really drive results for the company? What does the average day look like for someone in this role? And how do you plan to deal with X, Y, Z? Even like what do employees do in their spare time? Are there opportunities to volunteer time to, to causes the organization supports? Um, I definitely have, uh, you know, my go-to questions and that's, you know, where do you see this team going in five or 10 years? Or where do you see the company going in five to 10 years? Um, really having these questions helps you a ton. And I would say if you're not asking questions yet, uh, please do so. Um, as much as they're interviewing you, you are also interviewing the company to see if they're, if, you know, if you're a good fit and if they're a good fit for you. Uh, so preparing for a virtual interview can be similar to preparing for an in-person interview. Uh, dressing professionally, bringing your whole personality to the interview and projecting energy and confidence is very, very important. Uh, and then some key things to have on hand for your virtual interview include your up-to-date resume, contact information, the job posting and job description, and a list of questions. Other things to remember and consider are your virtual background, so be mindful of what or who is behind you. Um, mute yourself when you're not speaking, so this can definitely like help minimize the background noise for you in the interview, which can be pretty distracting. Um, and be sure to join the interview from a quiet area, so this will definitely help you in the interview focus easier on the question. 
um, and the conversations that are being asked and being, um, you know, the conversation that's being had. If you're in a noisy area, then consider wearing headphones with a built-in microphone so the interviewer can hear you clearly. Um, and make sure you set your alarm clock so you have lots of time to pre prepare. I would say show up even like a minute or two early, even if it's virtually, to um, the interview, and that's great. After your interview, it's always good practice to send a thank you to a thank you note or email to your interviewer. Um, this helps reaffirm your interest in the position and is your lasting impression before they make a decision. Uh, and just a side note here, um, this can be sent. So if a coordinator, like a campus recruitment coordinator, is scheduling your interview, uh, then you can definitely ask them to pass it along to the hiring manager. I would say, you know, don't be shy instead of forfeiting that option completely. Ask ask whoever you've been in contact with to pass it along to uh, the hiring manager or interviewers. Um, I'm sure you all have like many questions since we've covered a lot of information today. Um, and, you know, good thing is that I will be moving into the next section, which is ask me anything. Um, so happy to answer any questions that you do have. And I'm going to quickly pop up our um, socials here. I hope that you enjoyed the tips and advice uh, for tackling recruitment in this environment. Um, and I look forward to answering any questions that you may have. Thank you so much for that introduction and presentation of Jada. Uh, it was really helpful. I'm sure I've learned a lot and I'm sure everyone watching will uh, take what you learned and showed, showed us today for, for the rest of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, so we have a lot of questions that was sent in before the uh, before the workshop, but we'll oh, let's sweet. go through the ch uh, questions in the chat first. Um, from Prabji Singh, um, I hope I'm pronouncing that name correctly. He wants to know if BMO uses applicant tracking software. Applicant tracking software, do you mean um, like Workday itself or are you more so talking about like AI? If it's AI, then no, we um, no, we don't use AI. Uh, we manually screen our resumes. Um, every recruiter is looking at every single resume. <laughs> uh, we're definitely not using AI yet. Yeah, Prabhji was, uh, I think he was mentioning uh, AI. Perfect. Yeah, no, we don't okay. use that. We don't use AI here at BMO. We're manually looking at every single resume and, and screening them through. So definitely looking at hundreds of resumes, which is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I hope that answered your question, Prabhji. Me too. Yeah, so yeah, let's move on to the uh, presented questions. Um, so this hackathon being a uh, more, mostly a tech thing, most yes. of our viewers are computer science students, computer engineering students, and we start watching. And they want, one of the questions that was sent to them was, uh, what's the culture difference like between big tech companies and big financial institutions like BMO? I haven't worked at a big tech company, so I'm not sure if I can very concretely uh, kind of compare them. <laughs> well, what's but the culture like at BMO? I'll, I'll talk about the culture at BMO. Yeah. I think it's very, very supportive. We're very much um, a team effort here. And uh, I'm not being biased at all because I started nine months ago. So, you know, coming into it fresh and seeing um, how closely we work together and how how kind everyone is and understanding is has been amazing. The culture is truly everyone is a family, um, you know, we're supporting very flexible, you know, work arrangements. And I've never had an issue where if I'm like to my manager, like I, you know, I need to hop off for an hour or two that she says anything. So um, I've heard that across the business as well. Um, and I think that's, that's fantastic. Um, so, you know, especially in this virtual environment, it's really important for companies to be to be very cognizant and aware of our employee needs. And I think that's fantastic. So I would definitely say the company culture is very supportive, very inclusive. Um, and uh, definitely like employees are a priority. Sounds like a really nice place to work at. <laughs> I just want to jump off top, on top of that question. Um, this is from Steve in the chat. Will there be any more co-ops and internship opportunities for software engineering positions in the summer? Yeah, this summer, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm hiring for about 30 to 40 software developer roles. Uh, we are still actively in 
our uh, interviewing stages, if if that. So some roles were still, you know, shortlisting to hiring managers. Uh, so definitely our positions are still open. Um, we do unpost our roles once we um, once our pipelines are pretty full. So um, if you are interested, I am happy to send you a link to apply to. You can just message me on LinkedIn. Perfect. Yeah. So for for those of you who are interested, her LinkedIn profile is LinkedIn on the on the screen. You can follow there and then give sender a quick message. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Let's move on to the next question. So there's a this next question is about the length of a resume. There's a big controversy or there's a big <laughs> battle between how there long is. a resume should be between there two is. page and one page. Um, yes. You know, a lot of people say anything that you do on a resume, they can always fit in one page, sometimes not. What's your take on that? My take is I love one pagers. Um, I think one pagers are fantastic. They get clear, like we get right to the point. Um, but if you have amazing work experience or, you know, extracurricular experience, I do want to see that. I do want to hear about it. And in that way, I would say the extra page is, it makes sense. Uh, so, you know, don't just have two pages full of information that, you know, so, like some of it is strong, some of it is not as strong. I would say if it's, if you have really, really strong work experience and like one co-op term, for example, um, you know, keep it to one page and, you know, our focus will go directly to that. Um, and sometimes it means a lot more, right? Instead of cluttering your resume with a lot of other extra information. Um, but definitely if you have really great work experience, I still want to see that. And that's where two pages would be fantastic. Um, but sweet spot is definitely one to one and a half pages, I would say. And I agree. It's very controversial. Um, I would say resumes are ever changing. Um, expectations are ever changing. Same with cover letters. Um, sometimes it's a yay to cover letters. Sometimes it's a nay. Personally, I do not read cover letters. Um, and I know a few of us recruiters do not, but on the same hand, I am looking very closely at resumes. So I'm looking for that, you know, your education. I'm looking for your graduation day. I'm looking for your experience. I'm looking for your coding experience. What, you know, what platforms have you worked with, et cetera. I would say cover letters are really helpful when you're trying to bridge between two programs or two areas. Um, so if you were previously in like psychology, for example, or if you are currently in psychology, but you're taking a bunch of, um, you know, courses or like a Python course and you're trying to bridge into software developing, like that's when a cover letter would be really helpful to see, you know, your your passion and your interests. Um, and with that being said, you know, we definitely look at experience a lot. So even if you're, you know, your background doesn't match to a software developer, but your interest in software developer roles, we definitely don't, um, you know, there's there are no like block there's no nothing blocking essentially that mm -hmm. pathway uh so we're we're more than happy to consider all experiences really yeah thank you so much for that but the, i just want to jump back to your point on people you know on the resumes of people who want to pivot away from uh, one particular field into another such as psychology yeah. to computer science uh, for those those kinds of people who are applying on, as a, on an internship like that um obviously a cover letter would help but is there anything else that you know um, for a, for a person who's pivoting into a different field to include in the resume such as projects or yeah. you know, extracurricular activities such as like that absolutely absolutely both of those um and definitely highlighting your transferable skills is one of the biggest things that you can do so you like students truly don't know how far just highlighting like communication skills um, time management, organizational, attention to detail, like those few transferable skills can really apply to a lot of different disciplines of, um, you know, student roles and new grad roles. So I would say touching on those is also really, really helpful in terms of if you're pivoting. Thank you so much for that. So uh, I see another question in the chat from Ray. Uh, he wants to know how to write an impactful cover letter. I know you did mention that not a lot of people <laughs> read it sometimes, but if they right. had to, what, what would be your take on how to write an impactful one? 
A very tough question, Ray. Um, thank you for that, though. Uh, how to write an impactful cover letter? I would say keep it to one to two paragraphs. Um, we're not looking for a full page or more than a page. I would say within those two paragraphs, explain you know a little bit about your experience, a little bit about um, the area of interest and why and definitely why you're interested in the company i think explaining or like touching on any of their goals so if you go onto like bmo's website for example you can see that we have ambition 2025 so using keywords like that and kind of showing that you have gone the extra step to look into what we're working on as a company really helps um, write an impactful cover letter and of course making sure that you're addressing the right company um and you know keeping it nice and clean as well um i think those few points are really go a far far away with um cover letter definitely one to two paragraphs is is very sufficient because we can get a lot of information from your resume so you want to touch on things in your cover letter that you're not able to on your resume if that makes sense that's a real that's a really good point thank you so much for that vj Ada. So I think we have one uh, room for one more question. And there was one really interesting question from the sent in questions. Um, so it, it's actually a question that says, how do you make your, how do you downplay or sort of make it sound better on the, any missing period of study or work on your resume? Yeah, um, that's a fantastic question. Um, I would say, you know, you can, it's, it's a tricky one, but I would say like, okay, so how do you downplay like a period of time that was missing? You can just say, I took some time away from doing X. Like I know students take breaks in university and that's totally, totally fine. Um, so, you know, if you have a gap in your resume between years of studying, you can say, I was just taking some time away, you know, focusing. You can be there as candid as you'd like. Um, but if you want to be pretty general, you can just say I was taking some time away to figure figure things out in my personal life or, um, you know, seeing if this educational background or, or program or path was truly meant for me. Um, and if you want to go further into it, you can say, you know, during this time I connected with XYZ, I did XYZ networking, I took XYZ courses um, that further helped me kind of determine if this educational background was really a fit for me. Um, but definitely you can kind of steer that how you would like to, because, uh, we won't peer too, too, too much into that. I think that's, I think it's quite personal. Um, but if you'd like to share, you can definitely say what you've been doing in that time. Um, and that definitely shows self-awareness and proactiveness as well. So I hope that helps answer that question. Yeah. Thank you for, so much for that really insightful question. I know it's a sensitive topic and. A huge thank you to whoever sent in that question. It was an yeah, anonymous absolutely. question. I, I can understand why, but yeah. I feel like it's some. It's a really good point to be talking about. You know, just for anyone who might have a small gap in their education or their work period. Absolutely agree. It's very, very normal. Yeah. Don't be too hard on yourself. Please take care of yourselves first. Mm -hmm. um, you know, school gets very, very tough and tedious at times, but taking that break is really, really impactful. So you know, again, very supportive of that. And you can share as much or as, as little as you would like um, if there is a gap on your resume. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think we actually have one room for one more question. Uh, this one's from Prabji in the chat. Uh, is he say, He's asking, is writing, is writing an object necessary in a, in a resume? Um, is writing objective necessary? Like, does that mean the objective? I statement? think what he was referring to, referring to, was you know what what he what a person expects or is you know from a from an internship or the application, or what he achieves to from achieves from an internship or something like that. Um, is a writing objective? I sorry, I don't understand that. Like, is it objective statement that they're asking about, or like writing a writing objective mm -hmm. of the Perhaps resume. You, uh, could you be more specific with your question? If it's the objective statement, I would say it's not completely necessary, but it is nice to see. Uh, we do get a good direction of, you know, what roles you're interested in. 
if you're applying to like a software developer role, but career objective. Okay. Yeah, he did it. He was yeah, afraid so to career objective. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So objective statement. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Prof. <laughs> and Steve. Um, I would say it's not completely necessary, um, but it is beneficial. Um, so for example, if you're in an engineering program, but interested in a specific role of ours, that's where you can highlight that. If you're not including it in your res or in your cover letter, you know, you can say, this is a little bit about me and career objective statement. Yeah. Then you can just say, this is the role and this is where I want to go. So it, it is beneficial. I would say it's very beneficial for new grad uh, positions. Uh, for co-op internships, we we do get an idea of, you know, what your objective is. Uh, it's to gain work experience and, and relevant work experience. But I would say definitely for new grad, do include uh, an objective statement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope that answered your question, Prabhji. Thank you so much for that question. Um, yes, yeah, so I think we're just about time, but and that'll wrap up for today's workshop. Uh, thank you so much, Vijayita, for coming oh, in. I, it was really helpful, and I, I, I'm sure everyone in the chat and, and the people who will be watching the recordings later on will you know, take <laughs> notes, a lot of notes from this uh, workshop. Awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, I, and I hope it was beneficial. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, so if you guys have any more questions, please do go on her LinkedIn, which is on the screen of right now and then you can send her a message and ask her any questions or you can drop it in, the, in our discord channel which we can uh, send send that to Vijayita later on yeah absolutely all right so yeah thank you so much Vijayita thank you so much take care right, thank you everyone thank, have take care, fun guys. have a hackathon <laughs> thank you very much. bye guys thank you bye everyone